I'm going to be reading chapter one from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I want you to follow along carefully, read with your eyes as I read out loud. I remember everything about the night I first took the drug. The magic drug that changed me into Edward Hyde. I was a well-known doctor, one of the best in London. Many sick people came to me, and I helped them all. On this day, I was just showing a young woman to the door. In her arms, she held a baby. She looked up at me with tears in her eyes. Doctor, she began, I thank you with all my heart. I was so afraid that my baby was not going to live. If only, if only I had some money. Oh, do not think about paying me, I told her. Seeing your little girl smile is enough for me. See that she gets a lot of rest now. Oh, thank you, she said again, and she went out. As I closed the door, I noticed my butler, Poole. He had been watching me. You look tired, sir, he said. You should get some rest, too. I looked at the clock. It had been a long day. You are right, Poole, I said. You may get dinner ready now. I need to eat. I have a long night before me in my lap. Yes, sir, said Poole. He turned to go, but he turned back again. You do so much good, sir, he said. So much good. With that, he left. I shook my head. If he only knew, I thought, if he only knew that there is another side to me, a side that I hide a side that is not good at all. I had to smile. Poole probably thought that I was working in my lab on some new medicine, something that would help people. But that was far, far from the truth. That night, after dinner, I went to my lab. A fire was burning in the fireplace. It threw shadows of strange shapes against the wall. I could see the blood-red liquid in a glass by the table. My magic drug. It was almost ready. Next to the glass was a large pile of white powder. I had bought all I could from a nearby drugstore. It was the only thing I still needed for my experiment. No one had ever made a drug like this before. It was going to change me completely. I stared at it for a long time. There it was, a drug so strong that it could separate the good side of me and the bad side of me into two people. Think of it. The good side could go on working to make the world a better place, never bothered by any wicked thoughts, while the other side could be as bad as it liked, and there would be no good side to make it feel ashamed. I sat back. I remembered all the people who had made fun of me, like my old friend, Dr. Lanyon. Why, he had laughed out loud when I told him that each person is not really one person, but two. I remembered this, and I smiled. Slowly, I poured the white powder into the glass. The red liquid smoked and boiled. There, it was finished. I knew that I might die if I took the drug, but I had to know if it worked. I lifted the blood red liquid to my lips and drank it down. I let out a cry. The pain, it burned through me like fire. 
My bones felt as if they were being broken to bits. I shook like a flag in the wind. I was sick, so sick, I wanted to die. But suddenly, the pain stopped. I began to find something new. I felt younger and lighter. I felt that I could do anything. I turned and looked into the mirror. I saw before me a brand new person. I was much smaller. I was a much smaller man than I had been. My coat sleeves hung way past the tips of my fingers. I looked like a young boy in his father's clothes. I was smaller, yes, and younger, and very strange looking. The hair on my head was thick and wild. My eyes were small, small my nose was flat and my teeth were sharp and crooked I knew I was ugly but I liked this new face this too was me the evil side of me this was the part of me that all these years I felt I had to hide and so I gave this new me a new name Mr. Hyde Mr. Edward Hyde I walked around the room. Even my walk was different. Henry Jekyll was a big, tall man. He had a slow, heavy step. Edward Hyde's step was quicker, tighter, lighter. It had a strange swing to it, too. My new voice was the next thing I tried. It was a low, rough whisper. I sat down at my desk and took out paper and a pen. I was surprised to find that my handwriting was the one thing about me that had not changed. And so I spent the evening, I got to know everything I could about Edward Hyde. At last I saw that morning was coming. Poole would be up soon. He would be waiting to make breakfast for Henry Jekyll. But I did not yet know if the magic drug would bring back the good doctor. Quickly, I poured more white powder into another glass of red liquid. Once again, I drank the smoking drink. And once again, I felt the shaking, the pain, the breaking of my bones. When, at last, the pain stopped, I looked into the mirror. There, looking back at me, was the kind face of Dr. Henry 